So if you're targeting sales or leads on YouTube, you want conversions and you want conversions that are cheap enough, that are not very expensive, that you can afford and hopefully they are so cheap that you can scale it up. So in this video, we'll quickly take a look at different options to advertise and we will also learn how to set up conversion tracking inside of Google Ads and on your website. I feel that conversions are the best objective for online marketers like you and me because they give you something really concrete you know if you're looking for leads then you they can get leads if you're looking for sales you can get sales but both of them are conversions and to really really measure you know what's working and what's not working we need to have conversion tracking so first I want to quickly brief you about the different objectives for YouTube marketing and then we'll go right into conversion tracking so let's begin by first going to the main page and then clicking on new campaign so you've got these objectives here I've covered them earlier too in fact and very very briefly so you can either go for sales or leads and both of them are conversion topics and both of these ads can be video ads so if you got leads as an objective YouTube will try to show it to people who sign up more often and you will get more leads for sure. If you're looking for sales, you want to sell something outright, then YouTube is going to show it to people who have buying behavior online and that is uh, going to be very good for you if your offer is targeted and it's priced well, if it's presented well, that can be uh, a source of revenue rather immediately. Then you've got website traffic. So if you're looking to maybe just get some traffic or even if you're looking to sell in fact, you can use the website traffic objective. So YouTube is going to be a little bit of indiscriminate. It's going to target even the people who don't exhibit or have not exhibit, exhibited uh, a lot of you know buyer, buyer patterns in the past. So uh, you wanna look at this if you want pure traffic, if you have an offer that converts with pure traffic or if you just want to spread some awareness or if you want to get really really cheap clicks because the the traffic from sales you know and leads objective is going to be more expensive than the traffic you will get in website traffic objective then you've got product and brand consideration this is mostly for brand building for awareness and I don't really think this is something that you want to do at this stage maybe it's not for you same for brand awareness and reach it's not something that's going to get you immediate results and app promotions are for the mobile phone so it's not for our, us at all so the primary three ways i think you should be targeting your traffic is sales leads and website traffic so uh, let's try and look at website traffic first because we will go back to conversions a little while later and even if you're running a website traffic objective, Google will still show you a conversion targeting feature because, well, of course, that's very important. So uh, you can either continue with this and go on and create your ads without any conversions, or you can go for one of these objectives. Then let's try and target some conversions. Click on continue and you will have all the data over here. I've already explained. So let's learn how to set up conversion targeting. So click on tools and settings on the menu, then click on conversions. And you, you will see a conversion report which will tell you exactly how many conversions you get, you got, and what was the value for these conversions. So for example, over here, I've got 184 conversions over here, then 145 over here. And this is the total value for the conversions according to what I put in. And over here, I've got seven conversions. So depending on the ads that you're running, depending on the value that you've put in, you will get the calculations right over here. And you will see exactly what's happening with your ads, what's happening with your sales. And this is a great way to actually understand how much direct impact your advertising is creating. Now, to set up these conversions, to actually get the conversion data, you have to set up a, a, a Google pixel a Google Ads pixel on your sales page and also on the thank you page so sales page is the page where people go to buy the thing and after they buy the thing they will be taken to a thank you page a welcome page and on that welcome page you have to have another conversion pixel so let me tell you more about these so the first thing you want to do is create a conversion tag conversion action click on add a conversion and then see what kind of conversion you want to track Typically, it will be website conversions because we are dealing with web portals here, sales pages and thank you pages and whatnot. So let's click on website. Then you will be asked to 
tell Google Ads what type of conversion it is. Is it a purchase? Is it a lead? Is it a page view? Well, I don't know if that should even call be even be called a conversion. Sign up for sure. Then give it a conversion name. For example, I can say sales of widget X. Then you can choose whether you want the same value for every conversion and give it a specific value or if you want a different value for every conversion which will change according to the tracking code and it's a little more advanced but let's just go for the same value in every conversion and make it 1000 1000 then you can decide whether you want to have only the first conversion tracked so if your item is something that people buy again and again you can have repeat conversions you can choose to count every conversion or if you can choose to count only the first conversion if your item is not so repeatable or if you just want to see who bought it one time I'm going to go for every for now and then you've got the conversion window so you have a minimum of one week and then a maximum of 90 days and what happens is if your person if your buyer sees your ad let's say today and you set it up to 30 days then if they come back and buy the item from your website for the next 30 days they will be counted as the conversion but if they are beyond the 30 days like they buy on the 31st date they will not be counted as the conversion because they might have gone somewhere else discovered the product somewhere else maybe searching for it or maybe just going to it organically and they decided to buy it based on that stimulus and not not your google ad so that's why they don't call it a conversion but i would say two weeks is a pretty good idea pretty good you know time frame i think most of the sales that you make will be covered in two weeks because if somebody doesn't buy for two weeks it's quite less likely that they will buy automatically on their own again unless they see maybe another one of your ads so set that up next you've got the view through conversion window and I want to tell you the big difference between conversion window and view through conversion window. The conversion window happens or the interaction actually ha is counted only if the person has interacted with your ad. That means they have clicked on the ad and gone to the landing page only then the conversion will be recorded in this method and view through conversion will be recorded even if the person just views the ad and go or goes on to buy the product. So if you want, you can leave it to a very small number because uh, it's not really, really very likely that the person will view the ad, then remember it 10 days later and and buy your product. So maybe just keep it to two, three days just to keep the metric alive and see, you know, if you get any data in there. Then you've got the attribution model, which is last click or first click. If you want, you, if you use the first click, then the conversion will be counted from the first time the click happened or the first time the person clicked on your your ad but i would keep it last click mostly because it's really really nice to see you know uh, when the person last clicked your ad and when they actually bought when they actually you know purchased the product so last click is actually more logical once you've done that click on create and continue of course uh, you gotta select this first i haven't selected that yet then you will see the screen where you need to install the conversion tag and this is actually very important because it's the conversion tag which will decide how the conversion will be counted so it's just a small javascript code and you can choose how you want to put it on the html page or the amp page now if you are not working with amp already then you will know about it and i don't really want to confuse you with this so click on html and then you know you've got some options so if you've got some sort of google site tag like google analytics or maybe uh, Google Ads code installed on your page already then you need to select the global site tag is already installed on all pages and you need to add this particular line to that code so this is how the code you know looks usually so you will see that th this is a g tag option and you just need to uh, add it in the next line let me show you how so this could be your Google Analytics code or the Google or the Google Ads code that you have on your site you can see that it's just some JavaScript code and this line actually triggers some action this line triggers the view or this line triggers the Google Ads action which decides you know that somebody has has visited your landing page from your ad so what you need to do is you can actually add multiple things to the Google site tag and have multiple actions going on so back to the software back to Google Ads we will click on the global site tag is already installed and I would heavily recommend you install it on all the websites you install it across your site just copy this from here come back to this place and just paste it over here 
this code should be on every page on your website which interacts with the viewers so if you've got the google analytics code already over there just add this line if you click on it you will see that only this line is produced add this line to the google analytics code and the conversion will be started uh, to get recorded now there's a second part to it the event snippet or the place where the actual conversion happens where the person goes after the conversion happens that is so when somebody buys or when somebody signs up you will probably send them to a thank you page so this event snippet needs to be added to the thank you page in addition to this code so you will have your google analytics or google site tag code over there then on the thank you pages only you will also have the page load snippet this snippet pasted over there right after the conversions so anytime somebody goes to that page after visiting one of the other pages where they've purchased you will get a conversion recorded and you will know that somebody has taken the action that you want to take so again this needs to be put up between the html head tags let me show you that too so typical html document will have html tags and the head tags will be there too so what you want to do is take this code copy it and this should be on every page of your site like this and only on the thank you page you just need to add this to copy it across like this and this so you have it right before this ends the head tag ends put the global site tag over there and put the uh, snippet event snippet over there too and your conversions will start getting counted so that's how you set up a conversion that's how you start getting conversion data and once you've set it up correctly, you will see the conversions coming in. You will see that how many conversions you have. You will be able to see this in the main reports too. So you will know exactly how your ads are working and what was the conversion value. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and go to technicforce.com for more tools and training.